I'm Darren Rayner, fitness specialist for the Community Outreach Department, and we're here talking about working and well, a way to take our job life and our wellness life, bring it together to make the best you that you can be. Let's start off with one issue that we actually have within the workplace, and that is this thing called sitting is the new smoking. What do we mean by that? Well, we can replace the word sitting with sedentary, which is a non-active life where one is probably just sitting at work all day and then sitting on the couch right after that. There's not a whole lot of activity. There's not a whole lot of movement going on. We're just sedentary. Why is this considered the new smoking? Well, just like smoking has a lot of risk factors, so does sitting or a sedentary lifestyle. Higher risk for disease, for one, gives us a higher risk for blood clots, heart disease, diabetes, all of these different types of risk factors. Increased fatigue and stress. When one is not exactly active, we have a lot more increased fatigue, which kind of goes into our lower caloric burn and our higher fat storage. When we have a higher amount of fat storage, our fatigue levels seem to go up, the bad hormones seem to go up, and we seem to hold a lot more fat. Body fat and stress go together. So when we increase our stress, our body fat says, we're gonna hang on to it, we're gonna take as much as we can in. We have our joint health is being compromised, where a sitting and being very static for a long time, we get a lot of stiff joints, a lot of sore muscles, and it's very hard to kind of pick up and just start moving and going about our day without having those aches and pains that we normally get. Then there's this principle called use it or lose it, and that's kind of the big picture that we're talking about here. So our body is very supportive to whatever our function is. Our body knows more than we do, actually. When I say that, we look at, let's take a construction worker, for example. A construction worker is working maybe 10, sometimes 12 hours a day on a big project. They're carrying lumber, they're walking around, they're building things. They're constantly in motion and constantly moving. So the body, in a sense, rewards itself with using the body fat for energy, building up muscle so that it can best support the function that comes along with whatever your day-to-day -day activity is. Then we have our lose it aspect. When our body goes into a sedentary lifestyle or when we're stuck in a position where we're just not moving, maybe we're sitting at a desk for 10 hours instead of deciding to be active, maybe like the construction worker, we're not in that, exactly in that position, the body will say, well, we're only gonna give you what you need and the rest we're gonna store for potential energy use later. So that's like storing your body fat, which is actually energy for future use. The only thing is that future use turns into a couple days, to a couple weeks, to a couple months, to even years. So we're not exactly using it, we're actually losing it. The beautiful thing is there's a remedy to all of this. It's called movement. Movement is your medicine and it's free. That's the great thing. Some of the important benefits that we get there are our mental and cognitive health. Have you ever gone out for maybe a long walk or you've gone to the gym and you've exercised or gone to do maybe your favorite sport and when it's all done, you just have that really good feeling? That's what we're talking about with the improved mental and cognitive function. So with our mental and cognitive function, we have endorphins, which are the feel-good hormones that come out, your dopamine, your serotonin, all those different types of hormones come out to make you feel good, feel up, have a boosted mood. That's what's gonna help or improve your mental and cognitive health. Improve sleep and recovery. When we talk about use it or lose it, the body needs to rest and the body needs to recover. That's where all of our muscle building, our fat loss takes place, is when we're in a resting, sleeping specifically state. So if I'm active day to day, I'm getting moving and stuff like that, the body has to support me and support my function, as we said in the earlier slide. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna say, okay, you're gonna get into a better deep sleep and we're gonna help in that recovery process. Cravings for healthier food are a big factor too. In a study that was done by the Journal of American and College Nutrition, they found that there is a connection between exercise and the increased consumption of fruits and vegetables. So it all comes together in this umbrella that we call wellness. When you exercise or when you're active, your cravings for healthier options become more apparent. There's also improved bone and joint health. What we'll get out of that is more mobile and more flexible joints through our muscles being not as static and not as restricted. We'll also see that there is a better way to manage potential risk for arthritis, osteoporosis, all of those different types of comorbidities. So let's take a look at some of the exercises that we can do when we're simply at work. Many times we say that we don't have time in our schedule, but we can make time here with some of these simple ideas. 
There's a 2010 commitment. Now this is just a fun way of saying let's exercise every half hour. It does not have to be vigorous. What you may do is you'll set a goal for 20 minutes after the hour. I'm going to decide to get up and take the scenic route around the office or around the campus or around the department, wherever I am. This is a great way to connect with coworkers. Just see how people are doing, your fellow associates, and maybe even get some accountability partners with that too. Hey, let's get up. You want to walk around with me, take a few laps, and then you're right back to work. But it's a way to kind of help get the blood flowing and get yourself loose throughout your day. 10 till, you might decide, okay, whereas I did 20 after, I'm gonna walk around 10 till, I'm gonna do some of the exercises that we have following. These will be some strength exercises, some stretching, some mobility, just something to combine the two, just to keep our body active, keep our body mobile throughout the day. So the first exercise that we have demonstrated is called the seated leg extension. This is a really good exercise for our lower body, specifically our legs, which get very stiff as we're sitting at our desk, sitting in a chair all day, even going home and just sitting on the couch all day. Stiff muscles, things that are not as strong, and also a lower endurance in our legs. So let's combat that. We're sitting up nice and tall. We're gonna have our hands down to our side. And with a tall chest, all we're gonna do is simply just bring our leg up, kick out, and come back down. Again, bring the knee up, kick out, and come back down. The nice thing about this is we're strengthening the front of the thigh while also getting a very good stretch in the back of the thigh. This is gonna help improve our health within our knees, which is very important for longevity purposes. Another thing is also being able to make it more challenging, hold it out there for a second, maybe one, two, three, and back down. Lift it up, go out, one, two, three, and come back down. This is gonna get a little bit more of what they call mind-muscle connection getting a little bit more burn, more bang for your buck in that exercise. Do this for 12 to 15 repetitions. Give this a try. And if you're brand new or if you're a seasoned veteran when it comes to weightlifting or exercising or strength training, you're still gonna get the same burn all across the board. This is a very good exercise to do, maybe for three rounds, 12 to 15 repetitions. Our next exercise that we're gonna be demonstrating here is the standing abductions. This is a good exercise to help strengthen that lower back. Many times we find that we're in a position where we're always sitting, our back is always curved under, and sometimes our muscles are not very well supported in our low back. So this muscle is specifically gonna strengthen the hip, but it's also going to in turn give that low back some relief. So I stand here, I can have my hand, both hands on my hips, or I can put my hand on my chair, on my desk, on a ledge, whatever that may be. And again, I'm gonna stand up nice and tall I'm going to abduct or take away my leg and I'm gonna bring it back down to the central part. You can have your hand on your hip. This is very good because you'll feel that muscle working on the outside as you come back down. Again, we lift, make it a little more challenging, hold for two to three seconds and right back down. Do this again for maybe three rounds, 12 to 15 repetitions. And regardless of your fitness level, you're still gonna feel that same burn, that same bang for your buck and it's very beneficial for you. Just one thing to note, make sure that when we're doing the exercise, we're not tilting. When I say that, sometimes we kick and then we wind up turning or we wind up giving a little bit of a tilt. You're supposed to stay straight up and move the leg as far as the body will allow without tilting. So you see, it's only a few inches for me and we're right back down. But that muscle is getting the work that it needs. My hip is getting mobile and we're good to go. Our next exercise is our dumbbell I's, Y's and T's. This is a really important exercise to do because many times we're at our desk and we're in this slump position. We're at a computer typing or we're at the computer scrolling, whatever that may be. And we're putting our shoulder in a very compromised position where certain muscles are very tight, certain muscles are overused. And we're putting ourselves at risk for shoulder injuries, rotator cuff injuries, things like that. We want to prevent that. Like I said, the goal is longevity. With our dumbbells, I's, Y's, and T's, I have some two light dumbbells, emphasis on light, you could even go without weight. What you're gonna do, you're gonna stand up nice and tall. For our eyes, we're just gonna draw an eye with our hands. Come up shoulder to eye height, right back down. Again, this is our eye, shoulder height, right back down. You'll start to get a little bit of a burn in the shoulder, like I said, with all of these exercises. Hold for maybe two to three seconds and repeat back down and do it again. With our Ys, we're a little bit more in a V section so we're coming just short of our Y as though we're doing YMCA, the song. So we come up in our V for our Y 
and right back down to the central. You see a V for the Y and right back down. And as you guessed it, for a T, we're just going to make a T with our body. Come out to the side and right back down. All the way up to the side and right back down. Like I said, holding that for maybe two to three seconds, that'll give you a little bit more burn in your shoulder. And it doesn't take hardly any weight to get this job done for you. Again, these can be done for about 12 to 15 repetitions. That'll give you the most bang for your buck. The nice thing is with this exercise, it does not require really any weight. I do not recommend any more than maybe five pounds. Your no weight to maybe light bands or even like two, three, but no more than five pounds, that should get the job done for you, for everybody. Our final exercise is the banded row. Now, this exercise is great because like I said in our previous slide, we're always in this slump position, whether we're at a desk or whether we're just sitting around and our shoulders are really rounded, muscles are overactive in the front, muscles are underactive in the back, which leads to compromise, which can lead to injuries. We don't want injuries. So with this, because we don't have an anchor and individuals may not have an anchor at their office to put a band on, we're gonna make it more creative with a loop, okay? This loop, all you're gonna do is put your wrists through the loop like so, and that's gonna be your resistance. So the way that this loop is gonna work as our resistance, we're gonna have slack in it in front, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull and try and break the loop with my wrist as I pull my elbows back and bring my chest through like I'm Superman. Then I go right back forward, let off the slack, then add all the tension again, pull it apart, pull it apart, pull it in, squeeze those shoulder blades together, and I can feel those muscles in the back of my shoulder working. I'll give you a front view here. Right here, we have all this slack. I'm gonna pull out. I'm gonna try and break the band, bring it into my chest, come back forward, and loosen up again. One more time, pull apart, break the band, feel my shoulders working, feel those muscles between my shoulder blades working, and back forward. This is just going to help improve our posture from here to here to stand up nice and tall. Do this again, two to three seconds per repetition. Every time I squeeze, that's two to three seconds before I go back to neutral for 12 to 15 repetitions. This band you can get at a Dick's Sporting Goods, a Walmart, or even on Amazon. Here's a few things for us to remember, okay? Move to be well. That's the bottom line is we want longevity. We don't want to be shortening our lifespan with no activity really. So move to be well, move to feel well. We talked about it in the earlier slides that we want our mental and cognitive health to be at the best that it can be. That means as people say, get the juices flowing, get the blood flowing, just get up and get moving. Do an enjoyable physical activity. We many times feel that we have to go to the gym. We have to do these rigorous and very strict things. We can go for walks. We can spend time with family by being outside or we can go to the gym, or we can figure out a sport that we like or an activity that we may like. The bottom line is physical activity and falling under that umbrella. Avoid negative self-talk. This is something that prevents us from getting the ball rolling. Just because you didn't start today doesn't mean you can't pick up and just get after it tomorrow. Make it a habit. Whatever you do that may be a negative thing, tell yourself, we'll go again, we'll get it again. There's always tomorrow to get the job done. Finally, Today is better than yesterday, and today is the springboard for a better tomorrow. This plays right into our self-talk thing. Tell yourself these types of things so that you can get the job done for yourself. I hope all of this has been very helpful, and I hope to see you getting up and getting moving.